Here I want to look at how you could load structured data from a file, from an XML formatted file, to display in a web page. Here's an example of some XML. You can see that I've defined a channel, and the channel contains a number of items, and each item contains a title, a link, and a description, and all those bits of information are enclosed between pairs of tags as required by the XML format. This kind of XML data file is often used to contain the data that can be displayed in feeds, that is, such as RSS or Atom, the sort of thing that you can subscribe to. Now, if you want to know more about the XML format used by RSS, then a good place to look is XML.com. And here, for example, it has an article which explains the basics. So, as it says here, a feed comprises a channel, which has a title, link, description, and optional language, followed by a series of items, each of which can have a title, link, and description. And there's more information on different versions of the RSS format, and you can find that, as I said, on the xml.com website. But for our purposes, all we really need to know is that the data file contains these sets of structured uh, information between tags, which we are going to process using JavaScript. Now, this is my simple program. It's called feedreader.html. And this time, you'll notice that, in fact, there's no JavaScript here. When you're writing more complex JavaScript programs, it's normal to put them into their own separate JavaScript files rather than embedding them into the HTML web page. That has two advantages. One is that it simplifies the structure of the HTML page. It's not messed up with lots of JavaScript embedded into it. And the second thing is if you have a website with 100 pages, each of which needs to use the same JavaScript, then you don't need to copy that JavaScript time after time into each of those pages. You just have one JavaScript file as here. So here I have the script tag with SRC, which defines the uh, source file, and that is myscripts.js. Let's see what's in myscripts.js. Here is the actual JavaScript. The JavaScript itself takes the same form as it would if I'd embedded it in the HTML, but this time it occupies its own separate file. Here's an example of some real RSS feeds, and they're available, in this case, from the BBC news site, and it lists several different RSS feeds, each of which has some different sort of news information. Let me select one of them. I'll select Science and Environment. And I'm viewing this in the Chrome browser, and Chrome formats the RSS feed so it looks OK in a web page. Some other browsers won't format it like this, and you may need to install a separate RSS feed reading application. But whatever you're using to view the feed, behind the scenes is a data file. And let's look at that now. Tools, View Source, and there it is. It's an XML formatted data file, and it's pretty similar, in essence, to the sample XML data file that I've been using in my own little HTML feed reading example. It's got more information than in my XML data file. I've simplified mine deliberately because I don't need to parse out all these different fields, but in a real XML file online, you're likely to have a great deal more information, such as in this case, it's got the language, the last build date, the copyright, and even images um, that are embedded in the XML data file. So that's a simple example of how XML can be used online in a real RSS feed. Now, before going on to look at the code, I should just point out that there are some security restrictions in what you're able to display using JavaScript. And in particular, most browsers won't display XML data that's hosted on another domain, that is, on another website. So if you've got a feed stored on your website, you should be able to display it without any problems in a page hosted on your website. But if you want to take data from some other website, you are probably going to have to rely upon it being processed on that website using a language, for example, such as PHP, which executes on the server of that website, rather than using a script locally executing in your browser. Now let's see how this JavaScript actually works. 
Now, in order to display the data from my XML file, I've written a function called showfeed that gets the XML data document from the request object. Request dot response XML dot document element, and it assigns it to a variable which I've called XML doc. Now let's look again at the XML file RSS.xml. And you can see that there are elements for each item called title and link. That's the data, the string, the text between the pairs of tags title and link. The JavaScript gets that data and it puts it into two arrays, title list and link list. The get elements by tag name method returns a list of elements with the tag name specified as an argument between the parentheses. So in my code, XML doc dot get elements by tag name, and I put the name title, for example, that returns a list of elements that are found between the title tags. So that list is created from multiple items. I then iterate through those arrays, creating a hyperlinked string for each item. So that is by adding the relevant HTML tags, a, href, and so on, to create the hyperlink. And I add each string in succession to a variable called feedbody. And you can see that done here in this for loop. Now, in my HTML code, back here, you can see that I've already created a span, that's a, an invisible area, with the ID feed area. So go back to my JavaScript, which is used by this HTML code. And my JavaScript uses the document object's get element by ID method to locate my named span, and it then inserts my feed body string into that span. So I now have the position where my web page is created from essentially three files. It starts off with the HTML, which is the layout of the web page, the myscripts.js, which is a reusable JavaScript file, and the data, the XML data, that's loaded by the page. And that's kept separate, and I, of course, can modify that if I want different data to be displayed at different times. So let's see this in action. I've previously loaded this up onto my website so that it can be executed online, and let's see the results. So now I've uploaded all the data files and JavaScript and HTML files that go to create this page, and this is how it displays in a web browser when I log on to the location online of the feedreader.html page. So the JavaScript is executed, it's loaded up the XML data from a separate file, and it's created this page containing the titles of each of the items in the XML file, and each title has been linked, an active link has been created to link to the web page specified in the X XML data files. So I can verify that these are indeed active by clicking one of the links, and it takes me to the appropriate website, and click another one, so from this simple technique of creating XML data files and JavaScript and HTML pages all linked together, all working together, you can, on your website, load up structured data and display it in web pages.